Hi, it's Ruby. Thanks for clicking on my video. My family just got back from an amazing four day Pacific Coast cruise on the Disney Wonder. And fun fact, one of the reasons I started doing my um, videos on YouTube was because I heard about the Disney Wonder renovation coming up and I noticed that there wasn't really anybody talking about it to a really large extent. And I felt like that paired with the things that I give my family for advice and research that I do for trips was kind of a passion for me to want to share that information with you guys in a larger audience format. So said, I was super excited to be able to book the cruise that we booked and to be the first people to see the renovations on the Disney Wonder. There was a lot of renovations done and I'm going to break it down by each area of the boat, which includes a lot of pictures, a lot of videos, so keep watching. Also, if you like my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. I want to tell you first off that I was super surprised at the amount of work that was done. My original video where I talk about the dry dock in detail kind of only highlighted three main areas. Those areas included the French Quarter Lounge, Vibe, Signals, and the Cove Cafe. I guess that's four areas. So let's start with the French Quarter Lounge. I'm gonna do a video specifically dedicated to all the details of the lounge. I just wanna go over the entire feel of the lounge now that it's been renovated. There was a lot of people that thought maybe the Promenade Lounge would be swapped out and become the French Quarter Lounge and that's exactly what ended up happening. I talked to the crew that work in the lounge now and they let me know that probably about, I wanna say eight months ago, they were told in a big team meeting that there was going to be major renovations coming to the Disney Wonder and the biggest focus was going to be the French Quarter Lounge. Go to the main deck which is deck three. So that's where you have most of your evening activities, Triton's is there, and Tiana's place is located at the back of the boat. They wanted to give you a complete immersion experience. You'll just notice right away that the carpet, the flooring, and all the art on the wall changes and it starts to just go into a southern Louisiana feel. The aesthetics are just amazing. As soon as you walk over, you're gonna see the Mardi Gras beads hanging from the ceiling and hanging from the beams around the bar. And at the bar itself, you can immediately see Dr. Vasilia's hat with a bunch of potion bottles and stuff. Side note, I'm not here for the oculent, but The Princess and the Frog is one of my favorite movies. And I completely understand why they went this route because the things that people think about when it comes to that movie is kind of the battle between good and evil with um, Dr. Vasilia being, you know, obviously the shadow man and putting these spells on people and tricking them. And Tiana and her prince fighting that and overcoming that with love. You kind of see those elements throughout, but I would say the bar itself is more so dedicated to Dr. Vasilia. The big things I want to highlight here are they did the renovation exactly as they detailed. There is a new stage there. They also have the boxcar area where you can sit. It's a lot darker than the other parts of the lounge, but that is there as well. And then the menu is completely different. They have a lot of Louisiana favorites related to the beer and the wine choices, and also all of the specialty drinks. Some of them have Bayou Rum, which is a favorite of the South and Bayou Rum is now featured within that lounge, but also on the boat. Really going for it as far as this Louisiana theme, southern feel, um, southern comfort foods. If you saw my quick video on the menu, you'll see that they now have beignets that you can order any time of day. And one thing I wanna mention is the beignets in the lounge are different than the one in Tiana's restaurant. Tiana's beignets are deep fried. The lounge beignets are air fried. So different texture. Um, the beignets that are fried in Tiana's lounge, while they're really good, if they sit out for a, a while, which happens to be the thing with any fried food, they can get soggy and not be as like crunchy. Whereas the air fried beignets will last a lot longer, their texture holding up. As soon as you enter that area, you just feel like you're in the South. You're in New Orleans. Overall, the renovation looked amazing in the French Quarter Lounge. And if you can get onto the Disney Wonder or if you have plans to go on the Disney Wonder Cruise, I think you're really gonna enjoy. Great experience, looks amazing, great job Disney. Since I bring up Tiana's place, one thing that wasn't listed as being on the renovation list but actually did get a renovation was the floors in Tiana's place. If you go in there, you'll see that there's been some updates to the carpet, not only the passageway or hallway leading into the restaurant, 
but also the hallway area that's right in front of the elevators. You'll see that that carpet matches the carpet that is part of the French Quarter Lounge. Additionally, the wood flooring has been updated and it's a little bit darker now, but you still have the same feel that you had before. Looks really clean and great, great symmetrical lines. Um, you have the Mardi Gras beads hanging there as well. Additionally, the servers, they have an area where they'll lay down their trays or maybe paper that they take notes on as far as menus and items like that. Those, those countertops have been updated. I don't remember what they look like before, but it seems to be maybe a different material. So they consider that an update more for them than for the guests. But either way, it still looks really nice and it plays into the overall appearance of the restaurant really well. So now that we've talked about the renovations for the French Quarter Lounge and Tiana's place, I wanna move on to some of the other renovations. Vibe was the next really big update that took place on the Disney Wonder cruise ship. If you've been in Vibe before, the feel of the whole area was very college dorm. I think that was the best way to describe it. There was bean bags and even the art that was on the wall was reminiscent of kind of like a vintage Disney. And also the colors were a bit mundane. A lot of, I don't wanna say, a lot of, a lot of greens and brown colors. And it just wasn't very bright to me. Well, now, if you go and check out my other video, Walking Through Vibe, it looks completely different. Um, a lot of the furniture was taken out. They pretty much stripped the walls of any Disney items. There's quotes in picture frames, but outside of that, you really didn't see any Disney characters at all in there. They still have a lot of the video arcade games, so Guitar Hero and a few other games right when you walk in. And they've also updated the smoothie bar, coffee bar area, and that very much matches what they have on the Magic. My husband talked to one of the counselors in Vibe, and they had a whole conversation about why there was no Mickey characters in there and if it was deliberate. And the counselor did say it was deliberate. They had stripped out a lot of the Disney-specific items because one thing that they had noticed from a lot of the teens that went on Disney cruises is by the time they actually went to Vibe, they were kind of over the whole Disney experience, which is kind of funny, but I think back to when I was a teenager and the way that I thought about things and I can kind of see that. But they said that the teenagers wanted more of just a hangout spot that they could spend time with other kids and some families maybe travel with one kid that doesn't have siblings. It's just a nice place for them to all get together, maybe forget they're even on a Disney cruise and hang out. And that was kind of the theme behind the way that they did the designs and also the furniture and items that they left behind. I will say, you'll see quotes from maybe Winnie the Pooh on the wall and some of them are kind of devastating. One specifically said like, I, it could be worse, I don't know how, but it could be. And I read that and I was like, what? But I don't know. I don't know, but anyways, it was it was cool. It was a nice little chill spot. And I didn't actually go and get like a full link picture because there were some teenagers in there and I want to respect people's privacy. So a lot of times when I video, um, another reason why I don't do straight vlogging is because I don't want to get other people into my videos or my pictures, at least not the front of their face. And I wasn't able to get a picture that would have, you know, continued to respect the identity of the kids and the children that were in there. So I, I didn't, I didn't take any additional pictures. But I did go there twice trying to get um, full-length pictures of Vibe, and I wasn't able to get one because the kids liked it. They were hanging out and they're having a great time, and that's good because Disney cruises are for children of all ages. And I'm really glad that they did enjoy the renovations to Vibe. The next really big change that came was to the Cove Cafe. I was talking to the young man that was making my coffee while I was in there and asked about some of the renovations and his take was just the staff there were told the Disney Wonder is far behind on what the Cove Cafe should look like so this update is just gonna bring it more to a modern feel and it matches more so what was on the magic, fantasy, and the dream. I think that that pretty much fits in. When I went in there, it did give me a very modern feel. There's some abstract art and also some wood pieces, but they're not even really wood. They just look like wood <laughs> that are painted and um, little art on the wall. So it was very much a modern coffee shop feel to it. And they also updated the menus to iPads. I did say that you can't get a menu anymore unless it's on an iPad, that's not true. You can actually see the Cove Cafe menus in the adults area by the pool still. But inside the coffee shop, all the menus were on an iPad. 
and it was kind of cool to be able to see the specialty drinks that were going to be coming for the Halloween on the high seas. One thing to note is our cruise was the first cruise to display the renovations that came upon the Wonder, but it was also the last cruise of the summer season, I guess. It was more of like a transition cruise, and the cruise that started in San Diego was the first Halloween on the high seas cruise for the Disney Wonder. 2019 itinerary. On the iPad you could see the Halloween specialty drinks and they were supposed to come with a little cookie from I want to say the Haunted Mansion and they didn't have that available on my cruise so unfortunately even though I ordered the pumpkin spice latte I wasn't able to get the cookie. But still very cool. I like that if that promotes them to have more seasonal drinks because it's easy for them to update an iPad versus printing an entire new catalog. I'm all for it. One special thing I do want to note is the free desserts that are in the glass area right next to the side of the cappuccino machine are still there. They're still the same ones as before and they're still free. That was not announced by Disney prior to going on the cruise. That did happen was a update to the on-demand movies in the room. I want to tell you that the on-demand movies are always a really big part of our cruise experience. We love to lay in bed at the end of the night, especially with the kiddos, and just watch movies. We catch up on all of our classics or maybe the movies that don't come on Freeform or don't come on ABC, and we just love it, we indulge in that. And I was super excited to see that On Demand has now been brought to the Disney Wonder, and it is different than some of the other On Demand programs on the different Disney cruise ships. You can see an electronic version of the Navigator app on your TV. You can also see all the cruise ship videos that they might have. So for example, if there is a video that the crew does in the morning as part of their morning announcement for that day's itinerary, you can see those. You can also see some old recordings of not specifically shows, but maybe some like interview type things that they're doing. So Golden Mickey type thing. You can see that on your television. And you can of course see all the on-demand movies as well as cable. They do have cable options available. My husband somehow found ESPN and one day I came out of the shower and he was watching ESPN. I quickly, quickly changed it to Lady and the Tramp, but good. And a cool thing I want to know is that when you select your video, there's a character that comes across the TV screen right before your movie or whatever you're watching play. In the video clip I have, it was Captain Marvel, even though I said Captain Amer America, but it's Captain Marvel. And I saw the house from Up, and then I also saw Dumbo fly across the screen. So that's super cute, and I really like that update. I was looking at a couple blogs on the renovations prior to getting on the boat, and I guess in the past there has been problems with the boat basically being ready for the next cruise following a dry dock. And I will say that we did experience some disruption to the way that things were going on the boat. The biggest thing that we noticed is our Navigator app did not work when we got on board. Now I have had the Navigator app for a while, I do updates to my phone regularly, so does my husband. I have T-Mobile, he has Verizon, and neither phone worked with the Navigator app for the first two days. That was super frustrating because I mentioned in my videos before, I'm big on planning every single thing that I'm going to do, especially as a mom with small children. It's important for me to know what my day is going to encompass. And I like to be able to go on the Navigator app and see my plans. Well, for whatever reason, it wasn't working on my phone or my husband's phone. We did go to guest services several times. And when I went, I did see two women that were both having the same issue with their Navigator app. We were told that there was going to be an internet specialist coming on the third day. Um, by the third day, it did work. So that was good, but also, you know, frustrating because the first couple days it didn't work and we couldn't see anything as far as what was going on that day. Also, I think by the second day, we could see on the app, but we couldn't heart or like add to our plan things we wanted to go see. So there were some character meet and greets that we wanted to do, and we had to just kind of write it down to remember. Also, we had tastings and three time slots held, and it was really hard to figure out you know, what our daily plan was because we couldn't see. Additionally, when we first got on the boat, the TV wasn't working very well and there was one or two times that we lost connection 
but my husband was kind of just playing around with the back of the TV and was able to get it back up and running. But we did notice those technical difficulties. Nothing to, you know, ruin the cruise experience altogether, but still something that we did see. And I do feel like it was attributed to the dry dock. We had gift cards that we got for Christmas and for other various things because our family knows that we love Disney. And we went to go apply it to our account and we couldn't apply it to our account until the fourth day. And I actually need to go check and make sure that that went on correctly because the bill is a little bit different than what I thought it was gonna be. Or maybe we did spend that much money, but either way, it was it was a little bit much and um, could have been better. On one of my videos, somebody had asked me if there was any updates done to the concierge lounge, and I was able to confirm that the seats in the lounge have been updated. Not all of them, but some of them have been changed over. We weren't able to go get a picture of that, but if you are going to be in the concierge lounge on the Wonder, and you're able to get a picture, tag me on Instagram, because I want to be able to see what that change was. My Instagram is rubies underscore best underscore life. Another thing that got changed were some of the seats in Signal's bar. They did say that there would be some updates to Signal's bar, and so I was kind of expecting a complete revamp, but I just saw, more so saw different seats that, again, I feel like matched more of the magic, so more of the times looks a little bit more modern and more updated. And I've always seen them touching up paint around the boat throughout the cruise experience on past cruises, but that was nothing different here. We saw updates to the paint at Signal's bar. Another huge change that was done was to the suites on the cruise ship. A certain amount of suites on the boat and they've done some renovations to those to make them a little bit more fancier. I've been told there was some updates done to the flooring and also to the overall feel of the room to make them look a little bit more modern and a little bit more high end. I again was not able to get a picture of that because we did not opt to get a suite. We booked a little bit late. I don't even think there was suites available because concierge was sold out as well when I was looking at um, booking this cruise. But again, that change was there. Another update that I was told happened from our server, Melvin, was that they had done some um, updates to the engine, engine and those systems. And I wasn't able to go down and talk to any of the personnel that work on the engines, but I was told that that was also something that they were updating, maybe just doing like a functional checkout or whatever of the system, but... <clears throat> why but we were midship 64 and it was super loud um, it felt like we were in the engine room and again I attribute sometimes that to maybe the pace of the boat is going I find that if the boat is moving faster it seems to be less of a thing as far as sound and movement goes I don't feel the waves as much I think maybe we hit California a lot faster than we were supposed to and so maybe when you're slowing down the engines are still going you can feel the vibration and the sound a lot but it was really loud in our room and again, I didn't know. I assumed that it was attributed to either going too slow or maybe the new engine system. Well, that's it for all the updates to the Disney Wonder. I do want to drop a little rumor that I heard. I did hear that because Tiana's place seems to be received very well, um, the French Quarter Lounge change going into Tiana's play. There has been rumors among the staff that maybe they're going to do the same thing to the Promenade Lounge on the Magic and change that more to a Tangled theme. I think that would be really awesome, especially because literally in the movie there, there is a scene in the movie where she goes to the Snuggling Duck. Snuggling Duckling? It makes complete sense that they would do a transformation there. Also, since they were able to do it in a two weeks time and they didn't have to change any of the electrical systems, it was literally just the painting, furniture, carpet, and then also some of the, the architecture of the wall. I think it's very much possible they could do that. I have to go check and do some research on when the next dry dock is for the magic. I believe it was supposed to be following the Mediterranean cruise, but I'll look into that and if I find out something, I'll definitely drop a video on it to keep you guys in the loop. All right guys, well I hope you liked my video. I'll be dropping um, another video this week on the shopping within the Disney Wonder. We hit up the shops and saw some really cool stuff, so I'll drop a visual on that, and then I'm also gonna do a full review of the French Quarter Lounge. Talk to you later, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.